Hello friends, welcome back to our channel Enigma and Sunshine. Today we have on the table our two handguns to compare. First this one is a SIG P320 in 10mm and this one is a Chiapa Firearms made by Grisan in Turkey, a licensed copy of a Breda 92 but not in the 9. This one is in 40 Smith & Wesson. So these two are pretty much one way you know they are uh, related to each other because of this cartridges this one is a 40 this one is a 10 millimeter 40 was made developed from the 10 millimeter we just reduced the size of the cartridge same 180 grain projectile in both same diameter bullet same weight is just uh, 10 millimeter has a lot more powder behind it more powerful than the 40 it was done for the FBI they were you know they started with the 10 they did not like the recoil so they asked you know a new cartridge for them which was developed into from 10 to 40 Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson did it just length shorten the length of the cartridge same 180 grain bullet and this will be like having less recoil versus the 10 millimeter. Also a lot of ammo these days in the market I mean the 10 millimeter is loaded very much close to the 40 like 1050 1070 1080 feet per second you know which is the velocity of the 40 and same thing they are giving you in the 10 millimeter but this one is a six hour it's a 180 grain full metal jacket and 624 foot pounds of energy versus 40 which is a thousand forty uh, uh, feet per second and this one is somewhere like about 400 or like between like three, uh, 380 400 foot pounds of energy let's see if the Winchester I'm using they will advertise the uh, the energy on this cartridge okay here it is velocity 1020 energy 416 and this one is a lot higher this one is going muzzle 1250 in energy 624 so a lot of difference between these two I have loaded two magazine each, five round each, and we'll be shooting down a target. And we'll see how these two guns perform in terms of recoil. And also, uh, I will set up a chronograph to see what's the difference in the velocities of these two particular rounds. And you will see my hand, the muzzle flip, so you will be able to understand how is the recoil on these two rounds. Okay, let me set up the chronograph and the target, and I'll be right back. All right, friends, so I have two magazines loaded with five rounds each. I do five rounds on two different magazines to see if any magazine will perform any different, you know, sometimes there's some fault in the magazine. So that's why instead of loading all 10 rounds in one, I load five in each. All right, first one is in, second one goes to the pocket. <coughs> Sorry. So one in the chamber, I'm roughly about seven yards from the target and the chronograph is on and I'm gonna shoot the top target eleven sixty seven eleven forty eight oh failure to feed well No, actually it's a failure to eject. So this round did not got ejected properly and got stuck. Okay, let's go back to the table. All right, so I just removed the stuck case which had a failure to eject and it was stuck very much in the chamber. So this one, I'll leave it down there so I have three more rounds in the same cartridge and let's go and shoot these as well I'm about the same seven yards away from the target and there's one in the chamber 11. and the same happened failure to eject all right I'm gonna go back to the table All right, guys, I'm back with the two remaining rounds in the same magazine. 
that one was 11.59 on the uh, chronograph. Well, this was the exact reason I want to use two different magazines. So let's see if the magazine is at fault or I don't know what's happening. So I'll be shooting the remaining two rounds from this magazine and then we will switch the magazine. This time it is cycled fine. I think I missed the reading last time. Uh, 11.49, so it's like averaging about 11.50 feet per second out of this five inch barrel gun. I do have another magazine, so I'm gonna continue shooting. So this empty magazine is out and I have five more rounds of the same ammo and it's weeded properly. Let's see how this magazine will perform. Look like I'm pretty much on target. Nine out of ten hits are very much <laughs> dead in the middle. Yeah, actually, I mean, if I have to call it a group, this is about two and a half inch group. One was way down, but 1150 feet per second on average of this 10 millimeter out of five inch barrel. So let's go back and shoot our 40 Smith & Wesson with the five inch barrel and let's see how that will perform, okay? All right, friends, so I have my uh, five inch barrel Smith & Wesson 40 gun in here and this will be also a very nice trigger pull on this one because it's a, gonna be a single action like a Brita 92 and I have hammer cocked so I will have every single shot single action. All right let's see the chrono chronograph in our target. First shot 180 grain Smith & Wesson 40. Uh, to the low and left. To the left again, not by much though. Ah, uh, was me. All right, five shots are over. Let's go take a look. The group is not very impressive at all. I mean, I was trying to aim right there and everything is to the left. Some low, a couple of them were not low, but left. I have another magazine and let's see if it will shoot any different. <laughs> all right, so the fresh magazine is going in. Gun is ready, I uh, forgot the chronograph. So this one saying, 11.17, which is not bad at all. All right. Thousand three. This is more like a 40. 11, I mean, something was like very much in the category of the 10 millimeter. So, thousand three. 998 1004 972 and the last round 972 again <laughs> let's go take a look at the target I am all over the place. Maybe it's because of the ammo. Uh, I'm not sure. I have not bring any different type of ammo today. Well, I will do the similar testing again next time with this gun. But right now, with this Winchester white box ammo, uh, the performance is not that not that great at all. I mean, not that good. <laughs> Forget about being great. Not that good at all. So. This was actually a copy of a Beretta 92FS made in Turkey. Everything is the same, pretty much a Beretta 92. 
All right, let's go back to the table and I will try to shoot uh, the same 40 ammo on my SIG P320 in 10 millimeter and let's see if this ammo will perform any different. I'm gonna mark these so we will know which one I shot previously. All right, let's go loads. I will load five more rounds and we will shoot the 40 in the 10 millimeter gun. <laughs> All right guys, so the cartridge is a little bit shorter in length, but it will chamber in the 10 millimeter gun. On the Glock, Glock 20, it clearly says, which is chambered for 10 millimeter, do not fire Smith & Wesson 40. Uh, but some people still do, and it cycles with no issues at all. Let's see how the SIG will do with the Smith & Wesson 40. It cycles fine, first round. And I will try to aim the same way I was aiming with the 10 millimeter. Uh-oh, the tone was still saying 972, I will just reset it. All right. Okay, let's see what the chrono says. Nine twenty one. Nine ninety. Nine sixty two. 992. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look at the target. So, five shots I fired, one, two, three are out, low, and two are in the middle. Hmm. The group is way better with this 10 millimeter gun for the Smith and Wesson 40 from the Winchester White Box. And compared to what I was shooting all over the place with my uh, Beretta copy. Okay, so all right, let's see is there any difference in the power in these two? We have seen about 1150 on average with the 10 millimeter, and Smith and Wesson 40 was like 970, 980, something in that range, maybe a thousand. We can say 150 feet per second faster in 10 millimeter. So I'll set up a couple of water bottles over here and we'll try to shoot and we will see uh, if we can see any difference. All right. <laughs> All right, friends, so I have two rounds loaded in here. First one is going to be Smith & Wesson 40 and then it's a 10 millimeter. And I have two water bottles there. They are like a little bit uh, more stronger than the average water bottle. <laughs> and we will see if we feel any different. So the Smith & Wesson 40 first in the 10 millimeter gun, five inch barrel. Okay, I'm gonna take the uh, target at the left first with the 40. Let's see if, even if I hit it or not. Okay, it cycled fine. Was okay. Let's see what the 10 mil can do. <laughs> Start a little low, I guess. Uh, let's still go take a look. This one is from the Smith and Wesson 40. Still, there is some water in there, and same goes for the 10 mil. I think I shot them a little low. I was trying to aim right in the middle, but uh, can't even. I think I shot it very low. This one not very low, but quite low. I have one more water bottle. Oh, even we can see our table. <laughs> the 10 millimeter zipped through, so it was hitting right at the bottom. Right there. <laughs> I have one more water bottle, which is a little bit bigger, and we'll shoot it with the uh, 10 mil. 10 millimeter, one round. About 
five, six yards or so away, and I will try to shoot it in the middle this time. <laughs> Not much different. Again low. Oh, again, I hit it low. I was aiming yeah. right here in the middle. And that's why it will not fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's go back to the table. All right, guys. So back at the table. So this was a little test video, fun video. I was comparing the cartridges Smith & Wesson 40 with the 10 mm auto. Now the advertised velocity from Sig Sauer on this particular ammo was 1250 feet per second and I recorded at 1150 average. So I'm about 100 feet per second lower than the advertised velocity. Maybe they, you know, check it with a six inch barrel. I'm not sure, but Comparing is this to the uh, Smith & Wesson 40, this one advertised velocity was 1020 and we were able to hit like 1005, 1004, 980, 970 with the Smith & Wesson 40, which is very much close to the advertised velocity. So that's pretty good. But I was hoping that, you know, I, was get, I should be able to get like 1200 feet per second out of this six hour MO 10 mil, but I was not able to. Maybe, you know, they tested with their different gun, different length barrel. That's the only thing I will imagine. But anyway, uh, I like the shooting this gun. It's very accurate. I was hitting the bottles low. I'm not sure why, because when I was shooting the cardboard target, I was able to hit dead middle. So maybe uh, another couple of weeks or so, we'll make another video and we'll see how the accuracy I can improve with this P320 10 millimeter X10 from Six Hour. Until then, have a nice day. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. It helps a lot.